everybody, Jim Masters here, coming at you live from the United States here in the greater New York City area, New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, and uh, along the southern New England coast between New York and Boston. Beautiful day here, sunny, uh, 29 degrees Fahrenheit, so it's all relative as far as beautiful day. The sun is shining, there's no snowstorms, so we're good. I hope it's good wherever you're watching around the world. This is our Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show series. We've done about 635, 640 episodes of this series. We're having a really good time with guests coming in from all around the world. Lots of them are celebrity friends from Broadway, Hollywood, television, film, music, stage, culinary arts, sports, comedy, inspiration, and everything in between. And we've had guests that have brought us great entertainment, poignant conversations, and so much more. And of course, we have our Lovety audience, the JMS Lovety Squad. Those are the folks who watch our series all the time, and they watch religiously, and they are the faithful Lovety Squad. We welcome all the Loveties. Hope you guys had a great Valentine's Day, and uh, really cool. It's been a terrific run with our series here, and we thanks for all the comments. Uh, you guys are really stellar and superstars with all that. Commenting on our Facebook pages, Twitter and Instagram at Jim Masters TV. And of course, subscribing to our YouTube channel, which is the channel you're watching right now. That is Jim Masters TV. Where That's where we house the show and the series, which of course is the Jim Masters Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show series. And uh, we invite you to subscribe to that channel. Yeah, you see that red button right there. Subscribe, especially if you want to chat right now in chat while the show is live, definitely subscribe. But we would love it if you subscribe anyway, so you can keep abreast of all the episodes of our series. This is Double Lovety today. We've got two episodes of our series. We've got uh, Irish crossover tenor extraordinaire and actor. Of course, you know he was with Celtic Thunder as well. The incomparable Paul Byram is joining us live from Dublin, Ireland in just a second. And then tonight we have Brian Charette. He's incredible too. He's an acclaimed jazz pianist, composer, band leader extraordinaire, and Hammond organist. He's coming in from New York City tonight. So we have two shows today that we're doing for all of you to keep you entertained and inspired on the Gym Masters show live. When you do subscribe to that YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV, make sure you click the notification bell so you never miss any of the episodes of our series. You'll be notified every time we're doing our shows. Like this is a special show at a special time that we're doing. We usually do 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific live. So if you were notified, you would have known that we're here for you today live. So again, if you'd like to comment in chat live amongst yourselves, we'll take a look at some of those comments, show them as well. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel as well. And give this episode and all the episodes a hearty like. Yes, on the YouTube channel. Give it a thumbs up like. We love that. And leave a comment for us as well. Lots of comments here from everybody watching around the world, our JMS Lovety Squad and of course, fans of Paul Byram all merging together here on the Gym Master Show Live. We absolutely love merging those worlds together. Good to see you guys, and we welcome you to the show. Uh, he is all comfortable. He's rearranged the pillows just for our episode of the series. <laughs> Not all guests rearrange the pillows, you know, to be a guest on our show, but he did just for me and just for you. He's coming to us live and direct from uh, Ireland. We are happy to have our very special guest, Paul Byron. Put your hands together and join us as we welcome him to the show. Hey, Paul, my friend, how are you today? I'm very well. How are you? Fantastic. And thanks for rearranging the pillows just for us. Not many people go you the know, extra mile like that. <laughs> <laughs> I had to had to stuff the dirty socks down the side of the couch there and, you know, pick up a few plates and do a clean, general clean, you know, for you. That's it. The life of an artist, the life of a, uh, you know, a tenor. It's like <laughs> you got to do it yeah. on the run. You got to do it on the run. <laughs> for sure. Have, for sure. Have, how have you been since uh, we chatted last? You were on the show. This is your second return visit. We're very appreciative of that. It's good to see and we sort of put this together fast and squeeze it in because you are on the heels of coming here to the United States to kick off your USA tour, right? Yeah, that's correct. And look, you know, thanks very much for accommodating me. I, you know, I was, uh, I, I knew with this style of show that it's, it's a sit back and chat kind of vibe and, and, that would be tricky uh, on the road. So um, so I'm delighted to do it from here in Dublin. Uh, yeah, I head out to the States on the 25th of uh, this month um, after nearly two years, uh, yeah. which 
it's the longest I've been away from America since uh, I started working there back in my early twenties. So, um, so you know, it, it's it's quite it's quite exciting to get back out there and to see everybody again because obviously over the years I've much like yourself gotten to know a lot of followers and fans and friends and and I haven't seen them uh, in yeah. in that period of time and so I'm looking forward to singing all the new songs and and. Um, and, and again, just singing in front of people again, it'd be great. I was going to say, yeah, you know, with all the different guests that have been coming on our series from all different backgrounds, everybody's been talking about, you know, the great uh, adjustment and, and really sort of taking a look even at their lives and the things they want to do going forward that really touch their, their heart and soul for you. Uh, how have you been since we chatted last on the show? How have you been? How's the family? And how have you been uh, keeping occupied and getting through it all? Of course, you got a new CD out, which is exciting too. Yeah. I, so, you know, there's been a mixed bag of kind of, I suppose, primarily your objective over the last two years and my objective over, over the last two years has been uh, to stay positive you know, and, and to um, stay safe and healthy. I mean, that that's kind of really the priority. I mean, certainly here in Ireland, we have, um, I think, had it a little tougher with regards to restrictions than the US um, in in that we had a very serious lockdowns and yeah. things were shut down and, and, and there was no, there was no messing basically, you know, um, and um, just when we thought we were out of the woods, then Omicron came along and yes. kind of gave us a bit of a fright. And, and primarily because our, our healthcare system here in Ireland isn't adequate, you know, for for something like this. And in general, in actual fact, it's pretty uh, inadequate. So um, it needs to be looked at. And this this pandemic has certainly highlighted that something that we already knew. But but that's for another day's talking. But um you know, so because of that, we had to um, take it pretty seriously. But there, just at the end of January, there we we were lifted. You know, all the restrictions were lifted finally, and some level of normality has returned. And you know, it was important because I think people were at wit's end at that stage. And um, me personally, I kept busy throughout. I was able to do the odd kind of uh, concerts, online concerts, and so forth like that, uh, to kind of generate revenue, but also to keep in touch with my fan base and following. Um, I recorded an album and released it there just before Christmas of last year, uh, what I did for Love, which we talked about. Um, yes. And uh, that was with a big 66-piece orchestra. And then this year, just to kind of, I don't know, I suppose I, I enjoyed doing the the intimate concerts online. And I thought, you know what, maybe I'll do an intimate album. Um, but I didn't want to reference, I didn't want to reference COVID or the pandemic. So I called it by contrast. So it's called that because it's complete contrast to all the albums I've re recorded, well, not all, but a lot of the albums I've recorded in recent years in that they're all big orchestras and big productions, whereas this is a lot more intimate, a lot smaller. And, um, and something I'm very proud of. And so it was nice to kind of come out of this pandemic, not that we're out of it yet by a long shot, yeah. but it was nice to kind of uh, return to the States, yeah. uh, return to touring with two new albums um, and, 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 and a sign more than anything that uh, even though there was a pandemic and even though it crippled the arts, uh, we're still here and I'm still fighting. Which is really amazing, right? It's uh, what have you learned maybe about yourself during all this crazy time too? this time of reflection and, you know, next chapter now for you? Yeah, I, you know, it's a, it's a very good question, actually, because I think we have all had time to sit back and kind of think about ourselves and, and who we are and where we're going and what's our priorities and so forth. And, you know, when things that you take for granted are just taken from you. Yeah. Um, you do find yourself kind of uh, contemplating a little bit more what it is that you want to do moving forward. And so, um, you know, it was very evident to me that what was important in life and, and that was family, friends, loved ones, uh, spending time with them and not taking it for granted um, and, and maybe not focusing so much on materialistic things, you know, like a house or a car or whatever it might be. And that that there's a little bit more to life than that. And um, you know, I'm 42 now, and I, I think if at 42 that penny doesn't drop, you need to really wonder. You know, I see some people, and they're, you know, they're on the hamster wheel. You yes. know, just kind of 
got to get the house paid. Got to get the, got to get yeah. the second car. You need yeah. a bigger car. You know, right, I need right. two big cars. Um, keeping up. What? Look at the Joneses. They're after getting a third car. I need a third car. Right. You know, and, for for a long time it can be all consuming you know and it was for me i was my goal was always to have a house and to you know have a family and and, and all of that kind of stuff and and i suppose in in recent years i've kind of maybe given that a little bit more of a thought and and suggested that you know what maybe that's not for me you know and 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 look at what i have got going for me and and um and i'm very healthy and i'm very happy and and really you know everything else is a bonus and and i I, I know they're kind of cliches, but but certainly in the last two years that has um, yeah it's just sunk in with me, you know, and and um I'm a happier person, you know, yeah. uh, and I'm I'm enjoying life an awful lot more. You know, a lot of people have been saying that, especially people who are in the public eye who have been really busy and cranking through the earlier years. They're like, you know, this downtime, this reflective time hasn't really been such a bad thing in terms of just the fact that they can breathe they can reconnect with family and friends and with themselves and sort of mm. realign and reboot going forward. It sounds like you've been doing that as well, huh? Yeah. And, and like, you know, even now, as we kind of fast approach another tour, much and all as I, I've missed touring and uh, and all of that, you don't miss the stress that goes with yeah. it and the planning and the selling the tickets and the wondering if you're going to if you're going to sell enough tickets and, you know, all that kind of stuff that independent artists have to deal with, you know, the bigger guys, the bigger productions, the bigger names, you know, they don't probably have that fear as much, you know, but whereas when someone like myself goes out on the road or releases an album, it's all coming out of your pocket and, and it either, it either works or it doesn't, but that's kind of partly the enjoyment as well. I can still be my own boss and I can decide what songs I want to sing and decide the cities I want to go to. And, um, so there's give and take when you're, when you're an independent artist, I suppose. Yeah, there really is, you know, and, and often people don't realize that, that it really does. A lot of it does fall on you, right? Yeah, yeah, and and look at it is it's a stressful, it's a stressful situation because you know in particular when I announce tour dates, people are always like, "Oh, why didn't you come to my town? Or why don't you come to my town?" And I'm like, "Well, <laughs> the last time I was in your town, it didn't really sell very well." Um, so you know, uh, much and all, as I certainly in my early solo career days, I was very much like of the opinion, "Oh, you know, go to a town. If it doesn't sell well, don't worry about it. You know, I just." Uh, you know, you build, if so 50 people turn up the next time I'm here, hopefully 75 will turn up. And, you know, you're kind of always optimistic as I am. I'm an eternally optimistic person, but um, you, it, it does come to the point though, where you're like, okay, well, like, you know, you can't keep doing that. You can't keep going to cities or towns that don't sell. And, yeah. and much and all as I would love to be doing a 52 state tour, um, it's it's not financially viable. It really isn't. And, and so you announce dates, you hope for the best. And uh, I'm at the point now where if it's not financially viable for me, I, I can't do it. It's just like life's too yeah. short. Yeah. What are uh, some place? I mean, do you have favorite places that you've been to places that, you know, the minute you're there, you're just, you know, it might not be exactly home, but it sure feels like it. The way they embrace you and the way they respond certain places. Uh, is it places where there's a big Irish community or just across the board? Well, not always. I mean, yeah, it, it's it's across the board in some respects. So, like, obviously, there's the obvious places like Boston. You know, yeah. we we call Boston the thirty third county of Ireland. You know, um, it's just an extension. Um, so, if you, as an Irish tenor, uh, don't feel welcomed in Boston, you're doing something drastically wrong. <laughs> um, but then, of course, New York is New York is my home from yes, home. I lived there right. for five years. I have a very great fondness for New York. Um, but then you head down to Pennsylvania and anywhere I perform in Pennsylvania, you know, I'm always thoroughly welcomed and like Philadelphia has been great. Pittsburgh is sold. It's always the first to sell out whenever I do Pittsburgh and um, Chambersburg. Um, and like I go down to Florida then and you, you, you're you welcome there in Jacksonville. I keep going back to Jacksonville because there's a lovely little community there that come and support me. And then when I head out west, you know, <clears throat> Seattle, for example, is one of my favorite cities in America. I love Seattle. Um, it's a harder sell, you know, because yes. I don't think the Irish community is big. I love San Francisco, for example. Last time I was there, I tanked. So, mm. um, you know, it just it, yeah. it it really depends. And there's 
sometimes there's no rhyme or reason to where you are or, or how popular you are in that town or area. And then like Vegas, for example, the first time I did Vegas two years ago or, or three years ago now, whatever it is, I assumed, well, we're really going to struggle to sell here. You know, um, I can't imagine many people with all the shows that are on offer. I was thinking <laughs> they're hardly going to come to see Paul Byram. And, uh, and, and we sold out and we sold out the last time. So I'm back for a third time uh, this March, March 16th. Um, so, you know, I, right on the cusp of St. Patrick's Day, too. That's going to be cool. That's huh? right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm in, in, I'm in L.A. for uh, St. Patrick's Day. I'm in Cam- uh, Camarillo at a winery. So oh, I'm very nice. excited about that. Um, Hope they're sampling. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, 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 yeah, oh, don't you worry. <laughs> um, but yeah, look, you know, as I said, some places you can bank on and other places you just, you roll the dice and you hope for the best. And uh, sometimes it works out. And then other times you're like, well, that didn't work out this time. But maybe there could be other mitigating factors and reasons that it didn't happen. And then sometimes you just have to accept that maybe you're just not that popular. (laughs) (laughs) Give us an idea for people that don't realize what it really takes to pull off a tour, what it takes to put it all together, select. How do you select the songs, the material? Tell us about that process. Like for this particular tour, maybe you can give us a little tease of, what people might be able to expect. It's always a good time. It's always great music. You love working with the audience too. Uh, But what is that process like of actually putting a Paul Byram tour together? It's pretty intensive, isn't it? Yeah, it it is. And it, and and it doesn't just happen overnight. You know, like I, um, I started looking for venues first locations are the most important thing because um, the one thing I've learned in the past uh, is not to bite off more than you can chew, you know? So, uh, you don't want to go to a, a, a venue that's too big and then you're left kind of uh, hearing your feet walking out onto the stage. Um, and then you don't want to go too small either because then it's not financially uh, viable for you. So it's finding that happy medium. Um, I, I, I like venues that are kind of susceptible to my style of music as well. Um, and, and that is uh, kind of somewhat intimate. I actually prefer, believe it or not, small intimate venues uh, as opposed to the huge uh, theaters. I, I really enjoy the banter and the camaraderie between the audience and the, and the performer, you know? Um, so finding the location is first. I've, and I've learned from touring in America over the years that there's a whole variation of venue nowadays, you know? So it can obviously be theaters, it can obviously be community centers, but like I do, I, I done um, performances in Kennesaw and the university down there and they've been hugely supportive and a great turnout every time um, and then you could go to some people and decide to host a concert they contact me and they go look I'd like to host in my house and we yeah. can hold up to 70 people or whatever and I'm like okay it might be just it might work with the the route I'm taking you know that I'll be able to stop in and do a night there or whatever so um, so finding the venue is the first thing and then uh, you've got to logistically work it out i have a, a tour operator in uh in boston who helps me with that just outside boston a guy called chris delorier um uh travel concepts and they they kind of help with the routing um and then uh getting sound systems together uh bringing musicians with you or not as the case may be depending on the size of the venue or the turnout or whatever um and and so you, you have to figure all of that out. Then when that's all done you sit down really kind of almost at the last minute and you start deciding what the the set list will be and that can alter as well during a tour you can notice maybe one or two songs isn't sitting as well as you thought it might um or songs that you kept keep you keep getting asked for that you hadn't got in the set list as you add them but on this particular one it'll be a little bit easier for me picking the set list because you know you always have to put your couple of uh staple songs that people expect to hear and of course danny boy is one of them um for example but um on this tour, because I've released two albums now in the space of the touring period, um, I haven't actually got to tour either album. So um, I plan on doing primarily songs from both albums. Um, and that'll be a mixed bag. The latest album is, is an Irish uh, an Irish style album. Um, and, and then the album before, what I did for Love, is more musical theater crossover kind of thing. So, so there is that bit of both that people will be able to expect. And... Um, uh, I think more than anything, it'll just be a bit of banter and uh, the usual crack that people can expect when they when they come to my gigs, you know. I try mm. and keep it lighthearted. 
Right. That's right. That's the key is just to keep it, you know, lighthearted, connected, always a fun time as well. And uh, so the songs, when you are picking them, that's got to be really difficult, right? Like you said, there are particular songs, Danny Boy and others, that people really always want to hear. But then when you're selecting some of the others, um, is that a difficult process? Because you have so many and you got to really narrow it down. Even when making a CD, you may have a ton mm. of great songs and then you got to narrow it down and narrow it down to fit on the actual album, right? Well, right. But, um, you know, one thing I've always done is I've I've only ever sung songs that I believe in, you that know, that I feel you. I can deliver. Right. Yeah. And, um, you know, like one or two songs that are popular with the audience I've dropped in recent times because I'm not feeling it anymore and, and I just don't have to go through the motions. Um, so, you know, it's finding that happy medium. Um, and, and I literally go by what I feel um, I can deliver. But also there's a new little trick that's after coming on board, which I'm after noticing uh, with the whole world of Spotify, which much and all is is the kiss of death for a lot of independent artists. It can also help in some respects because I'm able to see what the most listened to songs are on my albums over the last uh, you know year or so. Um, and so, you know, for example, I recorded Memory from Cat um, mm. on my last album, and um, I like the song, and, and there's a reason it's on the sh on the show uh, on the album, but. I didn't expect it to be as popular as as uh, as it has been, um, and and so you know that will definitely be in the setlist because the algorithms show that that's one of the more popular pieces, and um, so you know I'm I'm cheating a little bit by looking into those algorithms and um, look people people <laughs> you can tell by an audience reaction yeah. as well uh, very quickly um, you know within the first two three gigs of the tour. You can tell what, what songs are are going great and what are not. I've seen these comments coming up as well. Is that that's yeah. brilliant? Uh, these feature. are our, people are yes, these little comments. Our, that's our great. fabulous. Uh, yeah, I'm a very interactive host, as you know, because uh, for folks watching for the first time, uh, we actually met several years back when you came into the PBS studio. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> for your well, we both PBS. changed a lot since then. <laughs> well, we we look great, don't we? And. Uh, oh. Yeah, you came into the PBS studio uh, for, you know, the airing of your fantastic concert back then, which was really, really cool. And uh, and that's another thing, too. You know, you have an opportunity to meet and greet with so many fabulous people along the way. And I know you enjoy doing that, too, right? Yeah, I do, for sure. I mean, it, it makes the it makes the touring because I tour a lot of the states on my own, you know, and, and yeah. It's nice to kind of pull into towns knowing that you're going to see a couple of familiar faces and, and have a bit of conversation. You know, it could be a long day from one concert to the next without talking to somebody. So um, so I always enjoy the meet and greets. I always do them after the show uh, unless the venue kind of specifically asks for otherwise. But but by and large, it's it's um, it's the it's the post show that I'd meet people. Yeah. Um, and, and it's great to catch up with people. Um, and, and, and look, I've got a really strong um core of people that have been supportive yeah little fan groups and stuff like that as well sure. so it's nice to see them and 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 um reiterate i suppose my gratitude to them you know yeah i know you've dabbled in acting too uh do you do you plan to uh delve deeply a little bit more into that world yeah I mean, what's the old expression I'm, uh, jack of all trades master of none you know <laughs> i yeah i've got acting i enjoy acting very much it gives you an opportunity to uh try a different facet of performance and and like you know recently i, I we have a thing in ireland called panto which i don't know pantomime shows that are oh yeah very big kind of institutions here in the uk and ireland um and they run every christmas kind of from november through to january and uh, I've been doing that the last couple of years, so it's kind of reignited my uh, love for performing in, in musical theatre. And um, so, yeah, I, I, I definitely uh, would like to revisit that. Um, I, I'm, you know, already putting wheels in motion with regards to it, yeah. um, because much and all as I enjoy touring and I enjoy recording the albums, um, I, I definitely feel there's there's other areas that I need to revisit that I've. You know, I've put so much time and effort into touring and, and recording in the last few years um, that I've neglected uh, my other um, 
I suppose, skill sets. And and so um, I definitely want to look into that post after this tour anyway. I'm, you know, hoping to kind of push that a little bit further. Yeah, for sure. That's really, really cool. Uh, you know, for those watching who, who don't know the story, what first inspired you to even get into performance and and singing and all of this that you've had an opportunity to do, you know, uh, for quite some time now, Paul? Yeah, like it, it, I suppose if you were to ask that question to a priest or a nun, she'd say, yeah. it's, it's a vocation, you know. Yeah. Um, and in many respects, that, that's kind of the same for myself, you know, in that I, I was a young lad at the age of uh, maybe seven. Now, I had been singing around the house as a kid, and my mom always noticed that I was a little bit more um, capable than than my sister, for example, with regards to music and you know, capping in time and, you know, being drawn to to music more. Uh, so she, she kind of got the sense that I was a, a musical child. Um, and then it wasn't until I went to school that they were doing uh, Joseph and his Technicolor Dreamcoat, and yeah. uh, they cast me as Joseph. And, and I went out, and I, you know, as a seven-year-old, got got the bug you know and and um and so there was a nun at the school that actually suggested i should go and and, and see this man who was a specialist in uh, boys voices boys sopranos um and and so it became very evident that I, my voice was more inclined toward classical cross classical music you know um and and so i studied that for seven years and i released an album then called the golden voice um and we recorded it really initially as a kind of a souvenir because uh, obviously, when the voice changes as a young boy um, into a man, the chances of you coming back as a singer could be quite slim. So my granddad actually said it. He's like, it'd be an awful shame if we've no recording of, of Paul. Um, so we went in, recorded it, and then little did we know that it would become a, a popular album uh, when we released it. It was literally done for, for fun more than anything. Um, and... Uh, and then that just one, you know, kind of snowballed. Like, uh, you know, then I was on TV as a kid, and then I was in an opera, Amal and the Night Visitors with our National Concert Orchestra here. Um, and I was the lead at the age 12 amongst all these adults. I, the, the lead in that opera is a boy, and, and it was me. And and it was it was very evident then that that was the path I wanted to go down. And um, you know, people always say to you, uh, Paul, it's a very tough career, and you should have a plan B, and you know all those things. But all I ever wanted to do was sing and perform, and um, and I, I kind of blocked all those people out. And and thankfully, the voice kind of then just slid through into the tenor register, and mm. um, you know I continued on, and then I I ended up been cast in a I continued training um with uh with as a tenor with with Veronica Dunn she's a leading she was a leading lady of opera here in Ireland and then I got cast in a show called the Three Irish Tenors and yeah toured around um America for a good number of years and that and um and then I went back to being a solo artist and 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 that went for a number of years and I ended up in a soap opera here in Ireland um to do acting obviously and as well as my singing and um started developing a, somewhat of a personality here and and then uh phil coulter approached me going look i'm putting together a group of of guys for american television public television and uh i think you know you could be great in the show and, and i was like well who, who's in it you know and and he was like four guys that have never done anything like this before and i was like God, well, that doesn't sound great. I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to go into a group of four guys who haven't done anything. And <laughs> um, and um, you know, one was an accountant. George was working on a, in a bus factory. Keith was, you know, a surfer dude, and uh, Damien was a kid. And and I, you know, I had been in the game a long time, so I was a little reluctant to be honest. And um, and 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 it was one of the best things I did. It was great crack, you know. It was it was a great experience, and so that so that kind of brings me up. I left there and left them in two thousand and ten. Believe it or not, uh, still feels like yesterday, but it's now nearly twelve years since I left them. And um, yeah, and yeah, I've been kind of chipping away as a solo artist since, and trying to keep fan base and keep people happy and interested, and you know, usual thing, just. So if we were to listen to uh, your iPod or your stereo system, boombox, whatever it is, 
what would be in it? What kind of music does Paul Byram like to listen to? You know, you'd be surprised. And I'm going to actually help you on this because sometimes I kind of just rattle off artists that I like. But, yeah. you know, when I go to the gym, I would throw on my 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 Spotify. And much and all as I curse Spotify and um, because what do I get? Every time my song is streamed, I don't even realize people really know this, but or I don't think people realize this, but for every stream you do on Spotify, an artist gets zero point zero zero three cent yes right so that's a lot of streams Unless in order you're to buy Joe Rogan. <laughs> yeah well let's not go down that road um and uh, so i'm still a cd buyer very much i have my cd collection and um but i have my spotify as well and i pay premium so that at least there's some money going toward it but it is an industry that's it's changing all the time but my my music, um, you know, I, I was up in the gym today and I put on my exercise music. Um, so, like, uh, let me just give you an idea now. I don't think you'll be able to even guess. My, it's so eclectic. So, like, I don't know if you can hear that. We've got uh, The weekend there, right? Um, love The weekend. He's very cool. Do you like The weekend? Sure, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Did you um, see the Super Bowl over there at all? I did, yeah. Oh, what did you did. think of the halftime? Like, it wouldn't be my kind of music, but, like, um, I loved it. It was just yeah. a, a real kickback to my early, you know, teens and, you know, going out to nightclubs and discos in my late teens, 20s, and that was all the music. So it was a real kickback to nostalgia. Um, but, like, I have Daryl and Hall and Oates there, and yeah. I have AHA. I have, uh, let's see, what else? ACDC. Um, I have Bruce Springsteen, of course, big fan of Bruce. Tom Petty, um, Paul Simon, David Bowie. So, like, there's a whole host of people. I, like, any, like, I like good songs. Yeah. Um, not necessarily into this modern-day drone stuff, yeah, you know. Right. Like, I like That's, a song, a verse, yeah. a song, a verse. You know, Elvis Costello, great songwriter. Billy Joel, that, that kind of vibe, you know. That, that's... They're my go-to for sure. What about composing as well for you? Is that uh, something that uh, you have enjoyment in and see yourself doing, getting involved in? Well, yeah. So I released an album a few years back called uh, Thinking of Home. And uh, on that, I put two of my own originals on it. Um, I put a song called Lady Liberty and I yeah. put a song called Sunny Morning in September. And um, both of those I wrote uh, and and. I, you know, I don't, I still to this day don't kind of consider myself a songwriter. I, I, I'm a singer of songs. I love, I love, love, love singing good songs. Um, but I think when people come to see my concerts, they get pleasure out of knowing that they're going to sit through an hour and a half of songs they know pretty much, you know. Um, every now and again, I write a few lyrics. I never really, I never really develop it more than I probably should. Uh, I probably should have um, used that time during the, the lockdown period to, develop it a little bit more but i wasn't feeling hugely creative and i think you need to be in a very creative space yeah and um, like when i wrote those two songs i was very much in a zone a new york zone and and that was the lady liberty and then the other one you know i was very inspired by by both stories and so um something really has to kind of sit with me uh and i know immediately if the lyrics are good enough i've written a lot of stuff that's bloody awful you know and so <laughs> they just sit in a drawer you know um and, um you know it's it's not that i'm uh what's the word i'm not up to it or i'm not interested in it i just definitely need to be inspired by it you know um right. and and maybe commit to it as well you know um uh, so in maybe in time I'll, I'll release another i think maybe on the next recording or i might even just start releasing the odd song on its own as opposed to albums because albums are bloody expensive they are very make, expensive you know? now yeah yeah they really are. And, and as we talk about you know like if you're getting if people are choosing to listen to it on spotify instead of buying the album it's in, in near impossible to continue making it you know Absolutely. I heard some barking there. I don't know. Maybe somebody wants you to do some compositions. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, um, <laughs> if he's not in, if he's not involved, he kind of looks for attention from time to time. Bradley, come over here. Come over to Daddy. No, we're not playing now. I'm doing an interview. <laughs> um, so yes, Bradley is always within a stone's throw. And actually, Wait, he wants you to throw the ball or something. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. And it's literally only because I'm not giving him attention. If I turn up, I hang up this call, he'll go to bed. Like it's just because I'm talking to somebody else and not involving him. And actually, I 
during school. So I used to do a lot of art when I was younger. Yes. And um, and so especially caricatures and cartoons and stuff. And I was yeah. doodling one day on a on a call, and uh, I developed a little caricature of Bradley. And um, oh, did you really? And as you can see, I'm wearing it now on my T-shirt. This is my little Bradley. See, and um, and we have the uh, Paul Byram signature at the end, you see, so that people know it's mine. And um, so, yeah, so I developed a little character of, of Bradley. Bradley, come on, because a lot of the people that follow me online also follow Bradley and are big fans of Bradley. So he gets gifts and everything. So, uh, so we have brought out a little Bradley range, a Bradley Byram range. Well, um, oh, that's what happens fun. once once they see. A, you know, a pet, uh, it doesn't matter who the other person is. You become second class to the, to Bradley in this case. Oh, for sure. <laughs> and, and Bradley, Bradley actually in the last three productions that I've done here in Ireland in the Panto has been involved himself. So, um, he's cool? been in the show himself. So, uh, he's, he's quite a following on Instagram and stuff like that. So, yeah, so the Bradley really? <laughs> range, we, we, I was literally an idea and I said, yeah, I might just put that on a t-shirt and then I put it on a tote bag and I put it on a whole load of different bits and bobs and people were buying it. I was like, this is mad. And um, so Bradley has his own little following and fan base. Uh, Does Bradley, is, is Bradley, is Bradley aware of his fame? Does he know? Well, Does he have an ego? Got, He's got an ego, you know, <laughs> he's, but then he didn't lick that off a brick. I've got an ego too. That's got to be an Irish though. expression. I'm going to steal that. Lick that What's off that? a brick. Lick that off a oh, brick. Yeah. That's got to be an Irish yeah. expression. I'm going to use that here in the U.S. Would you lick that well, off a brick? <laughs> no, or, or, if, or you say it as a compliment. So like if you yes. see uh, a very beautiful woman, um, or a girl, and you, and then you meet the parents, the mother, or whatever. Or if you're on a, uh, or you're going to your partner's house, and you meet the parents, you go, "Oh, I see. She didn't lick her look, her looks off a brick, you know." Right. And, and then like, the mother's um, like, "Oh, thank you." Kind of like chip off the old block. Yeah, yeah, but it's more saying, flattering. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah. But she didn't get her her looks off a brick, you know. So it's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree. <laughs> indeed, indeed, indeed. They're all they're all commenting about Bradley. Uh, does Bradley yeah, get does more Brad, attention uh, than Brad, you? In, the, in pantos? the pantos, yes, he does. Bradley, I, I'm almost beginning to think that uh, I'm getting cast in the panto because I come with Bradley, you know. Um, but yeah, he's very popular, especially with the kids. Uh, they do love Bradley. He comes running onto the stage, and they all love him. You know, he's and he's a good dog. He's he's got a great personality and. He'll be eight in March. Eight. Um, so, what kind yeah, of dog? Got, What's the breed? So he's a more he's a Morky, so half Maltese, half Yorkie. And uh, I picked him up in New York, um, whatever, eight years ago, near nearly, um, yeah, May eight years ago, seven years ago, whatever. Uh, so yeah, it's it's. I took him home then to Ireland with me, and uh, he's he's my best bud for sure. That is fantastic. That's really cool. They're saying he's adorable and hi from Ginny and everybody here. Show Bradley. They want to see Bradley. <laughs> yeah, Bradley's <laughs> gone into the other room. He's he's uh, yes. because he's unpredictable. You know, I don't want him to start barking, but maybe when, when he comes back in, I'll show him to you before the show's <laughs> out. Don't worry. What do you do to prepare for, uh, you know, a concert tour uh, or even any performance at all, Paul, as far as uh, physically and mentally preparing? Are there certain routines, certain things that you do uh, fitness wise, vocally, nutrition, uh, sleeping, just to really get into that mental and physical state where you're going to be able to take that uh, on? Yeah, I, I well for sure. Look, I you know I try and I try and stay fit and healthy throughout the year, whether I'm touring or performing or not. I mean, even during lockdown, I I did workouts here every day in in the in the living room, you know, because um, I'm a firm believer in fitness. I'm a firm believer not just for aesthetics per se, but like for your mind more than anything. I think exercise is is very important. Just taking your mind away from everything else that's going on in the world. Yeah. Just, focus on on that exercise for 45 minutes or 50 minutes or whatever it is um and i and you never feel bad leaving the gym you're never in bad form leaving the gym um and so so that's that that kind of continues throughout the year um and then when i go on the road i would um in the states i'm very fortunate i'm part of the crossfit community so oh, yeah. i i would drop in regularly to different crossfit gyms throughout america and everybody's so welcoming and i got to say even you know when i do that 
people are so um, welcoming. They're like, oh my God, Paul Byron from Dublin, Ireland is joining our class. <laughs> uh, and, uh, <laughs> you know, so again, as I mentioned earlier on, you go from one show to the next without talking to somebody. So it's nice to be able to drop into a box, do a workout for an hour, get to meet new people. Um, and and then go about your day. Um, so fitness is very much part of my my journey. Um, regarding little things, you do little things like, for example, I stopped drinking the Guinness. The Guinness gets parked for a few a few weeks. Um, is that difficult? Um, is there any withdrawal or anything? Or <laughs> uh, no, not really. And when you're in the work zone, you kind of I, I like a, head, a clear head and a, a clear body and stuff Makes like that. Sense. So I don't really miss it really, you know. Um, I love it. Don't get me wrong. I love my pint of Guinness more than mother's milk, as I call it. But, yeah. You know, you have to you have to park it when you're working. And I've always been a stickler for that. Even back in the days of Celtic Thunder and stuff, I would never drink during, you know, show weeks or whatever. Um, so so little things like that, you got to be careful what you eat, that you don't kind of put on a bit of weight and stuff. Little yeah. things. And then most importantly, trying to get as much sleep. So, and I've learned that through experience. When I used to go out solo touring initially, I just got as many dates in the diary back to back, you know, um, and I, I found I was exhausted getting six o'clock yeah. in the morning flights and landing in and then doing a show that evening. It wasn't working. So I've spaced them out now more. And, and I, I, I the, the imperative thing for me is to enjoy what I do. And part of that is, you know, not rushing onto the next town where possible. Um, and, and, you know, spending some time and make, taking my time getting there. And if I can drive even better. Um, so sleep is imperative to me. It really, really is. Um, because the first thing that's affected when I'm tired is my voice. Yes. Um, and, um, you know, I, I kind of just try and keep myself clean, healthy. I do a few, a little bit of warming up. Um, before the show, I'll do the sound check. Um, my 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 singing coach said to me many years ago, uh, an awful lot of the best opera singers in the world leave their top notes in the dressing room. Meaning you can do so much warming up um, and hitting the big notes and hitting the big notes and hitting the big notes and then you went onto the stage and you're exhausted. So, um, you know, it's, it's finding that middle ground. Just get the voice working and then go out and... Uh, I suppose ease into the show again. I yeah. I, I choose my songs tact, tact, tactfully, yeah, um, throughout you know, so that I I kind of build and that the voice is warming up as I'm going, um, and so that's kind of really it, you know. I I'm, I you know I don't I I honey manuka honey is a big thing for me. A throat coat I drink. Um, I'll always have a bit of throat coat on the t uh, in in a cup on the stage with me. Um, so you know, it's 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 little things like that. I haven't reinvented the wheel. I don't have any little tricks. You know, when I can come across the steam room, I always go for that because the steam is great for the voice. Um, but that's kind of really it, Jim. You know, just kind of stay healthy and stay focused and just get enough sleep and kind yeah. of my moral for life, really. You know, technically, we all should be doing all of those things that you just right. laid out for us, right? In, in everyday life, yeah. and uh, it's yeah, really for important. sure. Do you, uh, it's something that I didn't always do, but I know we're supposed to, and I've really started incorporating that into my routine, drinking a lot of water, especially when mm. you, know, you use your voice. I'm always using my voice in my career on television and radio, and I get so thirsty at night because I haven't drinking enough. I haven't, didn't drink enough water during the course of the day. Are you always trying to drink a lot of water and keep uh, the vocal cords lubricated? I, look, I should probably drink more. You know, I, to be honest, I don't. I don't drink enough water during the day. I don't think. Um, in general, if what they say, you should drink two liters of water a day. The average Joe. Um, but you know, during concerts and 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 that, I probably would go through quite a bit. Um, so yeah, I kind of try and I try and drink as much water as I can. Um, and and kind of keep it balanced. I, I drink it too much coffee, Jim. My God, coffee is. Uh, is uh, it's yeah. a vice for me yeah. like i'm like in the mornings don't talk to me until i've got at least two or three coffees into me and then we can work into it you know so i made a commitment to myself there about a year ago not to go on twitter until i had about three coffees <laughs> i was kind of looking well, at people's comments and went, what did she say yeah i what think, it, I, I think yeah. everybody on twitter has had at least three or four coffees <laughs> with some yeah. of the stuff that's on there yeah uh I, I kind of i've got to the point now where other than I've, you know, got a large following on it, I, 
I've fallen out of love with Twitter, to be honest. It's, it's where a lot of angry people go, you know, <laughs> to vent. Yeah. And I just don't need that in my life. So um, I kind of go on. I, I, I try and keep in touch with a few people. Um, and uh, But Instagram and, and, you know, more creative stuff is, is my vibe, you know. Uh, Anne in Florida wanted to know, how do you pack for a long tour? So if you're going on several city tours, uh, how do you pack? Yeah, it's a tricky one. And it's a good question. And um, I, uh, well, obviously my suits are priority. You know, I always have kind of two, three good suits with me or jackets, you know, kind of vibe. Um, so they're kind of priority. I, I work backwards. I'm like, what do I need on stage? What, you know, what's my my priority here, you know, and the priority is the gig and looking good for the gig. Um, and and then I will bring a handful of kind of gym gear, you know, so that I can yeah. I can go. And gym gear obviously doubles up. Like, so if it's t-shirt and shorts, you can yeah. wear that out and about. Um, but then, you know, you have a couple of pairs of jeans and a couple of shirts. And, and really that's kind of all you need because I'm not doing a huge amount of socializing. I'm not doing a huge amount of um, offstage activity. So, you know, I don't really need much more than that. Um, and I find because there's so many outlets along the way, if I'm if I'm caught short, I'll always be able to pick something up. And um, so I've I've got better. I mean, I remember when I used to tour with Celtic Thunder in the in the early stage. I used to go with two cases of clothes, two cases yeah. of clothes. And I mean, they would do one of these multi-city tours too, right? Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So like ludicrous, and and I've learned with age. So, um. You know, with this tour, obviously, I'll be up in, in the cold uh, areas of Michigan and um, Canton and all that kind of stuff. And then I'll be down in Florida. I'll be over in, in L.A. So, yeah, you know, I am going to be getting a bit of both um, when I'm away. But um, I kind of it's hard to pack. It is. Right, you're right. But like I also have to pack my merchandise. So the yeah. merch for the, for the tour, I don't pick that up over in the States. That comes yeah. with me from Ireland. So. So again, my priority is what I need for the stage, merchandise, and then if I have any room, I'll put clothes in it. If not, I'll pick them up along the way. You'll pick them up along the way. Do a little shopping while you're uh, while you're here. Yeah, or end up <laughs> wearing the merch, you know. <laughs> Ginny Ramirez says, "Does the quote girl in the office next door unquote ever go with you on tour?" Well, <laughs> the girl well, in the so office you, next door. Yeah. So, so is that a, is that Catherine, a new song on the album? <laughs> <laughs> no. So, Captain is 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 my girlfriend, and of course, um, we only started dating just before my my last tour in the states, which was March 2020. And um, how'd you meet? I, well, so through CrossFit, um, I, my CrossFit gym here in Dublin, um, we're, we're entering a team into this local competition. And one of the athletes got injured and um, they said, look, Paul, will you, will you go into the team with, with uh, Catherine and Amy? And I said, sure, no problem. Uh, once they're not expecting me to be good, I'll do it. And, um, and so and we went and we just hit it off, you know, from, from day one. Um, and uh, she's from Belfast in Northern Ireland. And so... Um literally I as as I uh as I went out on uh tour in March yeah. of twenty twenty, uh Catherine said, Look, do you want me to mind the dog when I'm away? And I said, Sure, no, that'd be great. You know, that'd be one less thing for me to worry about. So she moved into the apartment when I was away. And um then I came back from from the tour, because obviously COVID had kicked in and and it was locked down. And, and so Catherine was kind of working from here and, and she had her own place, but she was primarily working from here. And so the, 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 the joke, running joke was this is I'm sitting, where I'm sitting right now is my office desk. And Catherine would be sitting over there on her laptop working. And so the joke was the girl from off the office next door, you know, um, and I'm <laughs> yeah, getting on well with the girl from the office next door. And so this is kind of, it's been a tag that she's, <laughs> that I've kept going and uh, she's not been able to shake it. So we've been together since. And I think any relationship that can survive uh, lockdown and, and COVID uh, has a fighting chance. Um, yes. So to answer Jeannie's question, um, Catherine will be coming out <laughs> to visit me on tour. Uh, she'll be coming out to join me um, for about a week in the middle of the tour. Um, so I, I don't know what gigs Jeannie will be coming to, if any. Um, yeah. But but she will be there for for a handful of them anyway. So she'll be selling the merch at the at the at she'll the stand. And actually, Jim, I meant to say this yes. earlier, but I've forgotten. Um, tonight, because Jim Masters has been a great supporter of me, and um, we're going to run a twenty four hour discount code on my website. And all you've got to do when you're checking out is type in Jim Masters, 
and you'll get ten percent off everything on the site. And um, so that's for twenty four hours uh, as a thank you to you, Jim, and your and your followers. So um, that's I hope people will be able to avail of that if they want. Um, but yeah, so uh, Catherine, as I said, will be hopefully coming out on the road. That is awesome. That really is awesome. We have a uh, video here uh, because of the copyright with YouTube. We can't do the audio, but maybe you can at least take us through this and what it was like shooting this. This is Water is Wide by contrast. Uh, and this really is beautifully shot. Tell us about what it was like making this. This is the music well, video itself. Yeah, so I, look, I'm not a, a music video person. I haven't really done many of them, uh, as you can probably see from my YouTube channel. I do, you know, snippets from concerts and stuff like that. But a friend of mine up in in the gym again, Sam Memory. He um, he's been getting into this lately, you know, doing videos and doing kind of promotional work for for companies. And he said, look, let's try and and do a video. So we went out to Kalini, and that's where I got out of the car there. And uh, this is a well known beach in uh, on the coast of Dublin called uh, Kalini Beach. Um, and, um, and look, you know, Dublin and Ireland is a beautiful place. Uh, and, and we're very lucky to, to have, uh, the country that we have when the weather is good. It's like nowhere else on earth. Um, when it's bad, it's bloody awful. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, we went and we filmed it this one day. So I am actually, um, wearing a polo neck and a jacket there and I am freezing. You've no idea. <laughs> At one point he does a 360 around. And I've actually got a bit of like snot coming down my nose. <laughs> and I'm like, do we need to film that again? I think I'm and for anybody that just tuned in right now at that point, my guest is Paul Byram. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anybody that follows me knows I'm not very PC or reserved. So um, yeah. he's and accepting so gifts teacher. as Kleenex tissues. Anytime you see him, just give him a box of Kleenex tissues. This is the happy. shot here. So oh, I'm like, there. oh God, oh God, I hope they're not going to get it. Um, uh -huh. But they didn't, thanks be to God. Um, and I had a, a speaker in my back pocket, a big speaker playing the track so that I could hear with the waves and the wind and everything. We couldn't hear the track. So I had to put it in my back pocket um, so that I could sing along <laughs> to the track. <laughs> so very glamorous uh, setting. But we were blessed with the weather that morning. It was 7 o'clock in the morning. Um, and uh, behind is a, a Dorky Island in, there in the back of the distance uh, with, with a little castle on it um, and a row of houses, white houses. And behind me where this has been filmed, there's a couple of very well. So Kalani would be a very um, high end part of Dublin and the likes of Enya would live there in Kalani and Bono lives there in Kalani, uh, all within a spit of where I'm standing. Yeah. Um, and you can see why uh, it's so beautiful to live there because the views are stunning um, yeah. and the prices of houses are also stunning. Um, yeah. Yeah. So uh, I don't expect ever to live there. <laughs> I'll just go in town to shoot videos. <laughs> but um, but yeah, so that that's Kalani Beach in Dublin. And uh, as I said, we're very lucky with um, the setting we have in Ireland. It's, it's, it is yeah. quite a beautiful place to live. I'm very proud of Ireland. Um, and I do the bus tours around Ireland, as you know. Yeah. Um, it's my way of showing people my country and and the places that um, mean mean something to me. So, um, so that's what I wanted this video to be: something very simple, something very yeah. basic, but beautiful as well. Because the song, similarly, "The Water Is Wide," is a very beautiful, simple song. Um, Did you and I go didn't for want... a swim afterwards? Uh, not on that particular day not no um, and and i i did the last swim i had in the irish ocean was on christmas morning um and it was it was pretty cold pretty pretty cold yeah they're all talking about how beautiful the setting is even though it's cold uh beautiful setting and they've heard the music that the, they love it they love the album as well what was the inspiration for the album for by for that album well, guess. the album was was very much um, inspired by just songs that I had been singing over the last year or so, um, you know, with some of them in, in the online concerts, but just songs that I'd been listening to, songs that, you know, struck a chord with me. And um, I wanted a song, an album to kind of be a predominantly Irish styled album. These are all songs that have kind of become popular um, by Irish artists or written by Irish artists. Um, as you can see, that's the album there. Um, physical copy, who'd have thought? People still buy physical copies um, and why not? Um, so that's the, the, I've spent the last two days actually, Jim, packing 
these CDs and sending them off to people. So when you receive a CD in the in the post, you can be assured that it's me that's put it in the post. Um, and so yeah, as as we can see, there's there's um, eleven songs on it. Um, some of the most popular songs that have ever come out of the country, for example, "The Mountains of Morn." Uh, is a beautiful song written by a man by the name of Percy French. Um, there's The Feet of a Dancer by Charlie McGettigan, which is a gorgeous song. It's a song um, that he wrote about his daughter. And it's a little kind of, um, I suppose, a prayer of some shape or form, a, a wish to to his daughter saying, look, I hope you have the feet of a dancer. But no matter what happens in life, no matter what you go through in life, we'll always be there for you. Um, and, and it's a lovely sentiment. Um, so I fell in love with that. Uh, Isle of Hope, Isle of Tears, of course. Many people will know that song written by Brendan Graham, who also wrote You Raise Me Up. That song, that's, tells the story of Annie Moore, who went to Ireland, er, to Ireland, from Ireland to New York and got off at Ellis Island. She was the first to cross the threshold there at the age of 15. Um, and then I finished the album with a song called Hard Times. And basically, it's a song saying, hard times no more. We are done with the hard yeah. times. Yeah. Uh, the Water's Wide is there. Streets of London, again, by uh, a, a well-known Irish artist. Uh, Jealous of the Angels as well. I'm sure many people know that. The Contender is a great song uh, by Jimmy McCarthy. And it tells the story of a well-known boxer from Ireland who, who was a, a contender to be world champion. And he sadly had a... a a gift uh, with the women and he also enjoyed the, the drink and yeah. uh, the life of a, a drinker uh, often can come back and bite you in the ass and um, and it did for him and he could have been somebody but threw it all away um, and and it's a sad song yeah. but also an, an, a nice song and so that's that's in there too grace of course is one of the most popular songs on the album it's a song written about uh, a young a uh, freedom fighter from Ireland called Joseph Plunkett, who who got caught by the British Army and sentenced to death. And just before, a few days before he died, he was allowed to marry his fiance, and they had 15 minutes together wow. uh, before she was taken out of the prison, and he died a few days later. And the song is his love song to her, and it's called Grace. So, um, so there's some beautiful songs on it. It's, it's, it's I, I'm very proud of it. You know, there's five wonderfully gifted musicians on it as well. It's a very intimate setting. It's the most acoustic album I've done to date. Um, and, and hence, even the cover is, um, you know, I'm half in, in shot um, because it's contrast. That was the idea. A little bit of thought went into it. So um, so I kind of hope people enjoy it. I, I hope is, it enjoy uh, it. is it important to you? Is it is it a bit of a departure a little bit for you too? Were you exploring other sides to your personality and talent? in this particular album? Yeah, well, it's a different style in, in that, um, you know, often when people hear me singing, they're expecting a couple of big notes and a big powerful voice to come out every now and again. And I, I don't really do that on this album. This is more of a, a, a ballad kind of album. Uh, it's definitely a different style. Um, I've always enjoyed kind of throwing out a big, ah! But, you know, sometimes it's nice just to, 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 to sing a nice song and tell a nice story. And, um, and I've really been enjoying that lately. You know, um, obviously I enjoy belting out the big notes and, and hitting them with power. But, but I think connecting with your audience is the most important thing and telling a story is the most important thing. And people walk away remembering those stories. Um, and, and, and that's what I am. I'm a storyteller. Um, yeah. And, and um, I suppose I've evolved as an artist. You know, when I started out, I was very operatic. And, and I've become more commercial and more crossover, I suppose, over the years. Um, theater is still hugely present in my voice um, and it always probably will be. That's where I sit best. But I do love singing just a nice ballad, a nice song, telling a nice story. And that's very much what this album is. And uh, as I said, I kind of hope people will enjoy it. And it's it's available on hard copy. Um, through the website and of course with the gym masters code you get the 10 percent off so um so yeah and that'll be for 24 hours but yeah so hopefully i'll go out on the road and people will enjoy it and i'll hear firsthand what they think of that album and the, and the previous album um i actually you know what i have here jim i'm just about to send this out this will give you a laugh so 28 years ago as we talked about there he is the young paul byron can you see that i don't know if you can see that with the light uh, there he is. 
That was the first album I ever recorded. And it was called The Golden Voice of Paul Byram. And there was 21 tracks on it. <laughs> 21 tracks. Jesus. Child labor, that is. Yeah. Um, and can people uh, <laughs> still find that if they wanted to? Is that still? Oh, where can they find it, Jim? Where do you think they can find it? <laughs> Allbyram.ie. <laughs> I was going to say boxes yeah. in your basement ready for delivery and yeah. shipping. Or... <laughs> My mother is hoping to get the attic back. So <laughs> if you don't want to listen to it, if you want to listen to these things, so that is not Spotify, for example. So the only way you'll hear the original Paul Byram album is there's a couple of albums that aren't available on Spotify. Um, and as I say to people, even if you don't have a CD player, buy the album, support the arts, and then you can use it like as a coaster. You know, somebody's over for coffee. Go, oh, hello, would you like a coffee? Oh, yes, yeah, this Paul Byron coaster. Yeah. So that's that's, that's my theory. Creative. I'm not going to use it for music. Use it for a coaster. I like that. That's a that's a very creative way to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've gone from being a singer to a roadside salesman, you know. I was going to say. <laughs> between between selling pictures of my dog and, and, and selling my music, I don't know really where I – where I stand anymore. I think, you know, as a singer and an artist, and a lot of singers and artists I've talked to recently are saying the same, you know, you have to kind of think outside the box all the time to try and, yeah. and, and make a shilling, yes. you know. Um, and this, this, I, this doesn't, I certainly don't want this to sound desperate or, or it, it's not meant to anyway. But, you know, when you're an independent artist, um, it's imperative that your your following, your supports, supporters come to your shows. Um, because, you know they can go to the big productions. They're yeah. they're great and they are great fun. Um, and and they're probably a little bit more pricey, but but they are bigger productions and the big lighting and all of that kind of stuff. That's great. But fundamentally, if if you don't support the small independent artists, um, there will come a point where they just can't continue doing what they do. And I'm one of right. them. And and um, I kind of have to reiterate that. You know, I used to be as honest about these things as I am nowadays. And again, maybe that comes with age. But people need to realize that, you know, if you don't come now, if you oh, I'll go see him the next time he's in town, but I'd like to go see whatever show uh, this time around, a big production. Um, there may not be another time around, you know, uh, that's kind of imperative to say that. And so, you know, when you're selling your T-shirts and all your stuff on merchandise and, and, and on your website, that fundamentally pays your bills. But if you go out on the road and it doesn't sell, yeah. you could lose your shirt on it. You know, that's the difference. Is that why you're in a t-shirt? Did that happen? Or? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, if somebody came up to me right now and offered me $15 for the shirt, they can have it. He had a nice, really wool sweater on before, but then some guy knocked yeah. on the door and said he wanted it back. <laughs> yeah, listen, you know, I just had to sell everything, you know? You had to, he had um, to sell the sweater off his back. <laughs> that's it. So, yeah, so, like, you know, I do ask people if, if they can, come along, su support the show, come and see what, see what I'm about. If you're not sure. Take a punt. I promise you, you'll have a good night. Um, and if you don't have a good night, well, yeah. then we'll throw in a T-shirt. That's it. Exactly right. <laughs> so give us an idea again of the tour and when it's starting and uh, the cities that you're going to be uh, tackling when you come here to the States. Remind yeah, so everybody. All, the, all, the details, all the details of my tour, and for people that are interested are on paulbyram.ie. But um, yeah. I will be starting the 27th in uh, Houghton Lake in Michigan. Um, and then I will be going uh, to Ohio, uh, Columbus, Ohio. Then I'm down to Pittsburgh, uh, Philadelphia, Chambersburg, uh, Canton. Then I'm doing the Boston Celtics on the 13th. Then I fly down to, I think I'm in, after that I'm down in Fort Lauderdale. Then I'm in Nashville. I, oh, v Vegas, the 16th, LA, the 17th. Um, uh, yeah, and and then I uh, own in Kansas City as well in Missouri, um, and uh, I think that's oh Maryland as well. But I've only I think there's only four tickets left for Maryland's concert. So if you're interested in coming to see me in Maryland, Maryland, not I keep saying Maryland, uh, Maryland. It's a very uh, Maryland. Only, <laughs> sorry, yeah I, yeah, I I got corrected on that the other day. This um, is, yeah. And so there's four tickets I think left for Maryland at the moment, or before this show started. Um, and so, yes, that's it. Um, and and um, as I said, my intention is to be everywhere. I was due to be in Kennesaw, but the venue cancelled on that because of just COVID numbers in that area, whatever, weren't great, and they were a bit nervous. So that's fair. I respect that. 
Um, but as I said, uh, the tickets are on sale. I'm going to be on my flight to America the 25th, uh, come hail, rain or snow. I cannot wait to get back out there um, seeing everybody again and uh, hopefully singing for you all in person. It's going to be cool, huh? It's going to be really, really cool. And I know you're looking forward yeah, to it. I'm it's, excited. Uh, yeah, so many people are. Yeah, when I, It was amazing at the height of COVID, even going into the television studios here, uh, where nobody's there. You have like these buildings, six, seven floors and going in because we had to shoot some things for television. And the only mm -hmm. ones there are myself, a co-host, camera people and a producer. And that's about it. Everybody else. Oh, working, yeah, yeah. Working out of their Solus. houses. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's, it's a really, it's a whole new world and we've all had to adapt to it in just a lot of different ways, you know? For sure. But, you know, here's the thing. Uh, we're still here. And that's all that matters. And and uh, every day above ground is a good day. That's right. Um, and, and there's a lot of people that, that aren't with us anymore because of this damn yeah. pandemic. And, and um, yes, and I think it's up it's up to us then uh, to, to live our best life uh, because we only get one shot at this. There's only, yes. We only get one shot. This, this is not is a it. dress rehearsal. You get one shot at this, and and if we've learned nothing from from this pandemic, it should be that that um, life is for living, and and do what you enjoy, get out and and do it, um, and and spend time with loved ones and friends, and and yeah. um, come That's to right. a Paul Byram concert. If you weren't doing this, Paul Byram, what would you be doing? What would that other hat be that you'd be wearing? Uh, I've yeah. I've often thought about it and think about it regularly. Sure, if this tour doesn't sell, I'll have to look at it. <laughs> but no, I I think you know I was always going to end up doing performance in some shape or form, whether that was going to be acting or whether that was going to be singing or or even television. I would have liked to you know done television presenting, and um, so <clears throat> I don't know. It would have been some. I don't, I don't think I would have been a a nine to five guy uh, at a desk. I mean, I would have been in HR <laughs> regularly and probably got fired. So you know, it's. <laughs> It's uh, it's not for me. I don't really work for the man. I'm I'm not great at working for the man. I'm great at working for myself and for yourself. Um, yeah, I I think that kind of fundamentally would have been where I would have been in some shape or form. But who knows? You know, I and that could still all be ahead of me. You know, you just don't know. And and um, <clears throat> I've enjoyed the singing to date. Um, I have been doing this since I was a kid. Um, and I hope I'll be able to do it for a few more years. But. As I said, I don't take it for granted anymore. And and I think I, I reiterate that with all the people watching, you know, yeah. not to not to take their artists for granted because fundamentally if if uh if if they're not supported, it, it you yeah. can't it's not sustainable, you know. Yeah, exactly. You're right. It's these aren't really funded by major corporations and institutions. It's an independent. No, and I've said situation. it for PBS. Yeah, yeah, I've said it for PBS for years. I've been a big fan of PBS and I've I've supported PBS for donkey's years and um, you know, it's a beautiful jewel in the American crown. I think PBS is. It brings culture and it brings uh, the arts and it, it, it opens people's eyes to stuff and their ears to stuff that they would never have done otherwise. Um, and and you can't take that for granted. If people don't support that, um, it's going to go away. And yeah. and let me tell you, life without the arts. <laughs> Yeah. I don't want to be part of that. Right. We've experienced some of it the last two years. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, yeah. 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 And music's very healing and unifying. It's the universal language. So, you know, get out yeah. there. And... I mean, I've got people from all over the, all over the world have been sending me messages in the last couple of years. Um, again, through Spotify, they've been coming across my music. And, um, uh, and so, you know, there is, there are benefits to Spotify. Don't get me wrong. But, um, and, and through that, of course, uh, you know, I, I've been able to connect with people and, and they've connected to me because, as you say, music is a universal language. Right. Um, and and I'm very fortunate to be able to speak it in some shape or form. So uh, as long as people enjoy it, <clears throat> I'm, I'm happy. I'll keep doing it. Um, I'm, I don't take myself too seriously. I don't, you know. Right. I just don't bother with that, and nah. and um, like I'm I'm here I. for the crack. I'm I'm going to enjoy having the songs, and if you enjoy those two factors, come to my gig. That's um, it. But if you're looking for something highbrow, I'd stay at home. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. 
This was amazing, Anyways, my friend. Really cool catching up with you. And it's uh, been lovely. Thank you. Thank yeah. you so much. And I, I would love to stay stay longer with you, but I've, I've quite a bit to do. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, as, you can, to, as you can well believe, you got to get packing. You got to get going. And we have another show coming up in a couple of hours live. We got to reset for. But yeah. this was awesome. I'm so glad for the for the folks watching. This wasn't you know as of like four days ago almost. This show wasn't planned, but we put it all to connect, uh, together. We love our wonderful uh, Valerie Porter, who is a mutual friend oh, of Valerie's us as great. well. She's oh, the best. She's, great. she's a big yeah. fan of this she show. She coordinates she's everything new. for me. Yeah, she's right. brilliant. Yeah. We appreciate um, that. We're going to be doing much. a lot more a lot, a lot more of this stuff. Bradley, come over here. Come over and say hello. Just There's come on, Bradley. Say, go, say goodbye to everybody. Come over and, and say goodbye. Uh, so come this here. wasn't a planned show, and I had a TV shoot that I was going to go on, and I actually pushed the shoot back. <laughs> They're like, wait, you, oh, you wow. want to do that? Yeah, so we can get – because I knew you were leaving. So I said, hey, I know, maybe, yeah. and to do it like when you're on the road, it is kind of hard because, you you know, you got to go from city to city and everything. So it was kind of cool to get you just before you make the jump here to the States. And we will definitely keep the porch light on for you, my friend. You're welcome back anytime you know we'd love to have you back Please again do. soon let's stay in touch keep us abreast of all the cool things you've got going on congratulations on the new album the tour thank you and uh much blessing and and continued joy in, in your life just want to show you a couple of comments coming in and says looking forward to seeing you in jacksonville florida in march which is really really cool uh jane and sweet oh, yeah, says jacksonville Thanks, Paul, for joining us. And Jim, good luck with the tour. Alessandra Vaughn says, thanks for coming on, Paul. And Violet, uh, good luck on the tour and stay safe. And look who's there. Oh, very kind. This There's is the Bradley, real star yes. of the show, huh? Finally, you're going to say hello? Say thank you to everybody. Thank you to everybody for supporting Daddy. Yes, and keeping you fed. <laughs> he says he doesn't speak. He says he doesn't speak unless you negotiate the rate because he's union. Yeah, he's more. He's more. Uh, he's booked for his looks, really. You know, I'm booked for my voice. I have, I have the face for a radio. He's got the face for TV. <laughs> that is cool. <laughs> they were asking to see Listen, him. Listen, Jim. Thank you so is. much again. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I will and see you a, soon. What a blessing. Good stuff. And thanks for a great show, Jib and Paul Violet. Thank you. Our pleasure. Paul, my friend, good luck with everything. We'll stay in touch and safe travels. Okay. We'll see Thank you, you so soon. much. Take care of yourself. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. Paul and Bradley joining us live here exclusively on the Gym Master Show Live. As I was saying, gang, this show was not planned until maybe four or five days ago. And uh, I had a television shoot for today, but we sort of uh, were able to sort of push it aside. <clears throat> it's going to be tomorrow instead, which is awesome. So I could get Paul into this show today. We sort of coordinated everything, uh, scrambled very, very quickly to uh, create this episode for all of you. And also to get my buddy Paul here on the show before he takes off. We were going to do something in March, but we said, you know what? Maybe do it now before he takes off. Plus, my schedule is really busy right now. I do about five or six radio shows a day. We have a multitude of television shoots and shows that I do because you guys know I do this show, but I also do a lifestyle travel TV series on CBS. I do a television news magazine show in New York. I do daily radio shows. I do my work with PBS too, and it's a really, really busy time right now, so uh, we've done about 640 episodes of the Gym Master Show Live so far since we launched this cool entertainment lifestyle talk show series back in March of 2020. And here I cannot believe that in a few weeks um, we're going to be coming up, or, or was, yeah, I think it was yeah March, April we, we started this, somewhere around there. Maybe it was May. But we're actually coming up on two years of constant content and episodes we have done almost 640 episodes. It's probably even more if I really count. I haven't counted in a while and it's been spectacular. And again, you guys know I do this stuff for, for a living in the real world. And it was just a pleasure to be able to sort of move my schedule around. Paul moved some things around and we made it happen. We took uh, you know, this Irish lad here and that Irish lad there across the big pond and we made it happen for all of you. And we're back tonight too. We've got an, thank you, David. I appreciate that. Um, 
We've got another extraordinary acclaimed guest coming up in just a few hours. So I'm going to have some lunch and we're going to reboot everything here and, and sort of shift gears because we have an extraordinary acclaimed jazz pianist, Hammond organist, a uh, renowned critically acclaimed band leader and composer, David Charlotte is going to be here coming up at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, live. Thank you, Jim. Paul, it was uh, lovely wishing you both a year of happiness and success. Thank you very much. And thank you as well, Alessandra. Good to see you. And another great show. Thanks, Jim. Juanita, thank you as well. Jill says, thanks for having Paul on and promoting the tour. My pleasure, Jill. You know, and we do, we like to have conversations on the show too. <laughs> the 10% off. Do I get some of that? Uh, <laughs> I'll have to talk to, I'll have to talk to him. <laughs> anyway, um, you're welcome back. That's right. Welcome back. I think I took the headphone out of my ear. Uh, you're welcome back. Absolutely. Sure is. And uh, thanks for everything that you do. Stay safe. Thank you, Violet. I appreciate that. And it's so nice to have you here too on the show. And uh, it's hard to believe. I know we've been doing this that long, uh, almost two years of the Jim Masters Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series. And we've grown by leaps and bounds. Uh, thank you for all you do, Jim. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Jen Barry says, uh, Jim, today I was on our mountains chilling with me mountains. Dear Sar, you and Paul was on today. Drove home to Allentown. Had lots of Irish crack. Thank you, Jim and Paul. Slancha. That's cool. That is really, really cool. You guys are great. Um, a few more comments coming in here. And of course, in Jacksonville, Florida, uh, one of our longtime JMS Lovities says, thank you, Jim, for this wonderful afternoon. The pleasure is all mine always. Love that. Violet, so great to see you here as well. Thanks for a great show, Jim and Paul. And of course, anybody that is new that hasn't subscribed or anybody that's watching all the time that still hasn't subscribed, we'd love if you subscribe to our YouTube channel, Jim Masters TV. You get a chance to see all these episodes as they happen live and you can see them in the archives as well but you're also letting us know when you subscribe to our youtube channel there's no cost for that that um you enjoy what we're doing and all the hard work and everything that goes into this uh, entertainment lifestyle talk show series which is really uh, quite massive don't forget to give this episode a like and leave a comment for us as well on our channel we would appreciate that again it was really cool having Paul Byram come in and uh, chat with us and update us on some of the cool things that he's doing. That was really awesome. And again, here's that picture again. We met originally, uh, it was actually several years ago when he came into the PBS television studio and I was co-hosting and uh, we interviewed him on set. There we are. And uh, that was at the studio here in the United States, the PBS television studio. And that was in Connecticut, actually. Connecticut Public Broadcasting. And it was really, really cool. And we've stayed in touch ever since. And again, uh, here's another shot here. Take a look at this. We want to make sure we show that as well. We've got a cover of that, huh? Great shot. Cool stuff, gang. Uh, all for you here on the Gym Master Show Live. We always have a good time on our shows. And we have a myriad of guests that come in from all different uh, walks of life. David Thistle says, uh, thanks very much. This is a great show. Thank you very much. Make sure you stand on top of the nearest mountain to you with a bullhorn and you tell the world you absolutely love the Gym Master Show Live and everybody should watch and enjoy us. Yes, it's going to be two years of levity, which is really hard to believe. Sherry Larson says, thank you, Jim. Wonderful way to enjoy the afternoon. Thank you as well. See you later. That's right. We're back at seven with a really fun show. The show at seven is going to have lots of music, lots of live music and videos with renowned acclaimed jazz pianist, composer, and uh, Hammond organist. He's renowned. He's a critically acclaimed band leader and so much more. Uh, Brian Charity is going to be here and he's going to be playing live and it's going to be really, really cool. Um, Jim, you're looking handsome as always, always black and green is one of my favorite color combos. Thank you very much. I know I, I always say I try to try to dress uh, show appropriate. Uh, what that means is I always change the look and 
the attire based on the feel and the vibe and whatever the show is and whatever it is I'm doing, not just this series, but in my professional work too, we've always done that. So uh, I've, I've been known to say that in TV and stu television studios and on location that we're dressing show appropriate. That's why you always say, boy, you've got a lot of looks. Yeah, I changed uh, the look based on whatever it is we're doing, whatever the vibe is, whichever way the wind blows, you know? Uh, you guys are great. Thanks for all the great comments. If you uh, didn't get a chance to comment during the live show, you, please, definitely, we invite you to comment on our YouTube channel and um, give us a thumbs up like as well. And uh, we love you all. It's always a blessing to have you here. Um, we really are encouraged by everything you guys do and say about our show. Uh, you can also find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Jim Masters TV. Of course, our YouTube channel is uh, Jim Masters TV. That is where we house all of the uh, shows. And uh, certainly let us know if you have a guest suggestion. Feel free. Um, you know, we, we have a backlog. We're, we actually have a wait list of guests that want to get on this show. And many of them want to come back. This is the second time that Paul Byram was a guest on the Jim Masters Show Live. And we love that. And... Um, some of the guests uh, have made return visits. Sean Kanan, actor Sean Kanan, is coming back for a third time very soon. Kathy Garver is coming back, the wonderful actress from the beloved TV series uh, Family Affair. She's coming back as well, and so much more. All right, gang, we love you guys. And again, we've got an amazing show coming up uh, right after I have some dinner. <laughs> it's about, what, 3.30 here Eastern time. And uh, we just had a wonderful conversation. Lots of crack and good times with all of you and my buddy, Paul Byram, here on, there he is there, Paul Byram, on the Gym Master Show Live. You guys are the best. Thanks for all the enthusiasm, the energy, the support of the show. We love you all. Continue to spread the word and uh, coming to you live from uh, the New York area in the United States of America. This is your host, and producer Jim Masters here, thanking you for your time this time till next time, which will be just in a couple of hours. Uh, if you're not watching this live and you're watching this episode, I'm, I'm pretty much addressing the live audience. But if you're watching this later on, um, stay right there. Another episode of the Jim Masters Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series comes right up for all of you right here on the YouTube channel, Jim Masters TV. I'll see you, Jim, guest and loveties tonight. Perfect, Jen. All right. It's double lovety day. Two shows, same day for all of you. All right. We'll see you again soon. All right. We love you all again. We say that multiple times because we mean it. We mean what we say here. Jane from Sweden will be joining us for the second show of the day today. That's at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific for those watching live. Uh, don't forget, gang, you can peruse our entire YouTube channel and see all the past episodes uh, from... Uh, again, month after month of great guests and so much fun and poignant conversations too. All right, I'm starving. It's time to eat. <laughs> I haven't eaten anything today. It's another one of those days. I haven't eaten anything. And we don't forget, drink water. I think the theme to the show today is drink water. Lots of it. And be good to one another. Love one another. We say that all the time on the show. And uh, good time today. All right. We say, uh, Avita Zane, Sayonara, Slancha, Be Well, Moy Loop, and everything else. And uh, Jen, Jen is going to go outside and she's going to winter sunbathe, she just said in comments. That's cool. Well, enjoy yourself. Don't get a su winter sunburn, Jen Barry in Allentown, Pennsylvania. we see you on the next one. You guys take care and be well. And join us again. I'll be waiting for you right here on the Gym Masters Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series. Take care. Be well. And cheers.